welcome everybody to another QB Power Hour. We're very glad to have you all joining us today. Our topic today is report combinations in QuickBooks, plus we have our special guest, Kavinci, today. So thank you all for joining us. A quick, briefly introduction about QB Power Hour. It is a webinar series that Hector Garcia and I do every other week um, on Thursday, starting at noon Eastern. Our next episodes will be live in Las Vegas at a special time on November 19th. Hector and I will be at SleaterCon. We're going to be talking about some advanced fee bank fees in QuickBooks Online, as well as um, some value pricing. So it's a great session. It's going to be a longer session, um, and like I said, it's a special time. So make sure you make note of that for next week. Then December 10th, we're going to talk about some advanced QuickBooks topics. We usually try to cover about 50% desktop and 50% online, as well as bring in special guests with some third-party apps, practice management topics, or other topics that are going to be useful to you all. Um, so our agenda, we're going to talk a little bit about the CPE process, announcements and updates, and then we're going to talk today about um, the chart of accounts and report combinations in QuickBooks and in QuickBooks Enterprise. Um, then later I will talk about opportunities to work with franchises and how to find those. Charles has some good tips uh, to share with us, and then he's going to share with us too a product demo showing us Givenchy and how easy it is to do consolidated reporting and everything. So that's where we're going today. For those of you that don't know, my my name is Michelle Long. I'm a CPA with an MBA in entrepreneurship, owner of Long for Success here in Kansas City, Missouri. Yay, Royals, we did it. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's a little bit about me. Hector, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself quickly? Sure. Uh, my name is Hector Garcia. I'm a CPA in Miami, Florida. I do QuickBooks training in my own classroom right here next door to my office. Um, and But for the most part, I do traditional accounting work, mostly QuickBooks Consulting, and I'm really happy to be here. Very good. Thank you. And the primary sponsors for the QB Power Hour are my business and Hector, Long for Success in QuickBook Bookkeeping and Accounting. And we also then bring in third-party developers and sponsors such as Kavinci today. And we look for sponsors that have very good, reliable products that are going to be useful to you, are, to you all. We're not officially sponsored or associated with Intuit, although we do work closely with them and have them on as a guest speaker periodically and love working with the folks from Intuit. Now, this is very important. So if you do need CPE, uh, you do need to attend this live webinar for at least 50 minutes today. So you need to be logged in for at least 50 minutes. Sometime during this webinar, we will give you the CPE keyword or the password, and you need to write that down and save it for later. Don't type it in the chat box or the question box. Write down the CPE keyword, then near the end of the webinar, we will give you a poll question and you will need to answer and enter that CPE keyword. Then those CPE certificates will be emailed to you in about three weeks, so give them time to process those um, and you'll get that email. Now, a couple of quick announcements. We've got some upcoming live events. SleaterCon will be in Las Vegas next week week. If you're going, make sure you see Hector and I and say hi to us. Like I mentioned, we will be presenting QB Power Hour live there uh, next week, so we'd love to have you come in and say hi and join us for that session. Then the QBO, the QuickBooks Online Certification Prep Tour, is going around to various cities across the U.S. I know I will be going to Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlanta, and uh, somewhere in Kentucky, I can't remember, <laughs> um, in a couple of weeks. And then Hector and I will be in Florida in January. So check out and see if there's a city near you where you could attend that, or you would be able to do some of the online webinars as well. And then next year in May, the Scaling New Heights is going to be in Atlantis this year. So put that on your calendar and join us there if you can. So with that, Hector, I'm going to go ahead and let you take it over and cover some of the stuff in QuickBooks for a little bit. All right, perfect. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I am going to do a demonstration on doing a report combination in QuickBooks Enterprise and, and, and talk about, um, you know, sort of the manual way of doing it with QuickBooks Online. But the first thing I want to do is I want to define the difference between consolidation and combination because uh, we may be uh, using the word consolidation wrong sometimes uh, because in, from financial terms, consolidation means something different than report combinations. So let me run through real quick and then for, for, for some of the CPAs and people with formal accounting training, this is going to take you back, not in a positive way, <laughs> to so sort of the accounting theory. So if, um, if you got two companies and one that owns the other, so we have a parent and a subsidiary, 
and uh, this subsidiary is owned more than 50 percent okay it's 51 percent plus that means that the the company itself has a controlling interest has the majority of of the of the shares that means that we have to by financial statement rules or by you know accounting rules we need to consolidate them now consolidate them means that we're going to take uh, the entire general ledger from one company and the other and combine them and add them up together but we have to take out intercompany transactions so if a parent sells to the subsidiary or vice versa those sales have and expenses have to be taken out that way they don't get double added um, the associated accounts receivable and accounts payable would also have to be removed and any intercompany loans would also have to be removed again this is consolidation not combination when we do combination we typically don't worry about these things and also as a sort of side rule here if the ownership interest um, is between 51 percent and 100 percent but not not quite 100 percent then you also have to take the proportion that you don't control or the proportion that 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 is not owned by the parent and you have to calculate it out uh, with this non-controlling interest. I won't really talk about the process of doing that, but that's the general rule for consolidation. Now, there's other consolidation rules that have to do with different ownership percentages. So for example, if the parent owns less than 20% of the subsidiary, typically we don't do any cons consolidation at all. And we take um, the stock purchased and the additional uh, paid in capital and we book it somewhere as an asset, right? A, a sort of as an investment, as if you were buying a company in the stock market. And anytime there's a distribution, um, that can go against the additional paid in capital and um, and anything over that. So, you know, up to your initial stock investment basically becomes income. So there's no real consolidation being done. So the income and expenses and net income component is pretty much ignored. And we only manage uh, the distribution uh, portion. Okay. Uh, can you still see my screen? I think my webcam got turned off, but that's okay. Um, all right. So the next uh, yes, method here. Yes, we can here... see your screen, Hector. Okay, good. So the next, the next method is the equity method. This is if the parent owns between 20 and 50 percent. And this one, for uh, for for tax accountants, this is going to be very uh, familiar because this is the same way that we manage K ones when you have partnerships owning other partnerships and so forth. Uh, but basically, we we still don't do consolidation under the equity method. But what we do is we take the percentage that we own. So let's say we own 25% of the company. We take the percentage that we own and that much of the net income gets multiplied and gets added as if the net income belonged to the parent company. And uh, so that, that would be a credit to income and then the, the debit would be that same asset account that we use under the other method. So basically you have three ways. One is we ignore net income. We only manage it in terms of investment and distributions. Then we have the equity method where we add the net income. And then we have the consolidation method, which is when we remove intercompany transactions. Okay. So that's consolidation. So I wanted to make sure that I, I set up a premise for that because what we're going to be talking about is combination. It's not the same thing as consolidation. It's important to keep that clear. Combination means we ignore all the all the accounting rules and we basically take the entire general ledger and we combine them and it, to even include intercompany sales. All right. So if we're going to do a combination, uh, there's going to be three approaches. Uh, one is we're going to do it manually and we're going to export the P&L from each financial statement into Excel and combine them in Excel. All right. That's that's the this is called the poor man's combination tool, right? We export it to Excel, combine it there. The other tool would be if all the companies are in QuickBooks Enterprise, right? So if you have a combination of QBO, QuickBooks Desktop, this is not going to work really well. And if you got some in desktop, I guess you could convert it to enterprise just for the purpose of of, of the combination. And you can actually uh, initiate a combination tool in QuickBooks Enterprise, which is the part that I will demonstrate. Um, uh, towards the end of, of my portion. And then the, the last approach would be using a third-party app. And there's there's several. Cubinci is not the only one, but Cubinci is the one that's going to uh, do the demo here. And, and what I like about Cubinci, just to do a quick preview, Cubinci is the only one that I know that can actually combine QBO and desktop uh, intermixed. And, and that to me is huge because I do have one particular client with like 47 entities and he's got some in desktop, some not in enterprise, some in desktop, some in some in QBO is the only way I can combine those. All right. So let's talk about um, doing the Excel. Comp so, so we're, we're going to do the demo and I want to make sure that you have this, this points here clear. 
first of all, the chart of accounts has to be the same across all companies. And again, this is true if you're going to do a manual combination through Excel. If you're using a third-party app, most respectable third-party apps in the reporting world have internal mapping mechanisms that do not require you to have the same chart of accounts throughout all companies. But if, if you don't have a third-party app, you manually have to make sure the chart of accounts is identical. And that, that could be uh, a pain in the butt. And I'll explain why in a second. And intercompany loans, um, what I recommend is because it's very difficult to, uh, to manually move stuff around, is it's, you have one account called intercompany loan uh, across all the companies. And um, you can make it an other asset or something like that. But but make sure that it's other asset in every single company, even if it, if it has a, a, a credit balance or if it has a negative balance and it looks strange that we have a negative asset. I would still recommend that you put it under intercompany loan, other asset. That way, when you consolidate, at the end of the day, what we're expecting is that that account ends up at zero. So it's sort of a, a automatic way of, of getting the combination system to zero out intercompany loans without any actual intervention. Now, if you're going to do the enterprise consolidation uh, by class, which is a kind of an interesting way of doing it, what I recommend is any invoices or bills that you have that are intercompany, tag them into a class called intercompany. That way, you can actually manually delete those columns in the Excel portion. And I really hope that I have uh, time to do that uh, in my demos uh, section. So I'm not 100% sure if I will have a time for that, but if I don't, if I don't have it in the live, I will go ahead and do it. Um, we just had a quick question about using location uh, for more than one company within QBO, and I just would answer to say there's location tracking or there's class tra tracking, and it would depend on what exactly you need because those two are different. So you need to kind of determine which one would be right um, yeah. for your situation. Yeah. Um, but yes, Austin, people need to write down Austin, Austin, Austin. That's where the Cavinci headquarters are located. And I was excited to go down there and meet with them in their offices in Austin a few weeks ago. So write down Austin. And uh, we'll give you that poll question a little bit later in the uh, webinar today. So Austin, Hector, go ahead and take it away and continue oh, on. All right, perfect. So now it's time for my demo. So let me start with talking about a uh, chart of accounts. So I'm gonna pull up uh, two QBO files that I have here and I wanna just kind of illustrate what are the, the great challenges with having uh, the same chart of accounts in two QBO files. So right now there is no built-in tool, there is no, let's call it free way of, uh, of, of doing a consolidation with all QuickBooks Online unless, okay, so that's the big unless, unless we do the Excel uh, uh, maneuver, right, which, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so let me go ahead and pull both profit and loss and balance sheet uh, from QBO. And basically, these are two entirely different companies, and I'm kind of showing them here back to back. So um, what is the, the challenge with having multiple entities is that normally um, people don't have the foresight or don't have the discipline to have the same chart of accounts. So you have things like car and truck expense on one side, and you have things like automobile expense on the other side. So what ends up happening is if I actually export both of these to Excel and I try to combine them, I'm not going to have much luck because I'm going to have accounts that are going to be all over the place. So in order to really uh, achieve a consolidation with this uh, two companies like this by exporting into Excel, I would have to export my chart of accounts from one, import it on the other, and export <laughs> on one and, and, and import it on the other. So I'm going to show you just with one because we don't have a time to do the entire process. But uh, exporting the chart of accounts is actually pretty simple. You go into the reports section and you pull up a report called account list, okay? And then you click up here where it says export and I can export that into Excel. And uh, while that exports, I can come into uh, the store that I wanna bring that chart of accounts from. I click on the gearbox and I click on import data, okay? And then I'm gonna go into chart of accounts. And again, this is the one that I wanna import the chart of accounts from. I'll click on browse. And then I'm gonna uh, find that one that I just downloaded, it should be here in my downloads section, uh, select that. And because it was exported from, from QuickBooks already, uh, that should be pretty simple. Um, so I can actually go in there and, and select the different uh, columns. Let me just double check that what that uh, spreadsheet looks like before we bring that in. So let me go to downloads and go to report here. 
and we may have to sometimes we have to clean it up a little bit before we actually import it um, so that that may be the case yeah so it was the case so I have to make sure that I delete all these headers so of course it's not gonna be that easy so I had to delete all the headers first to make sure make sure that I have on the very first row I have all the titles of, of those columns correctly that way when I try to do the import um, on the on store one so when I go to uh, import data Actually, it's not this one, it's store two, the one I'm doing it with. So let me go to browse and let me go to import data and then I'll go to open. And now my headers should uh, be recognized now. So now it's gonna ask me, hey, what's where's the detail type, the account, the account number and the type. So because I, I already exported from uh, another QuickBooks Online file, it recognizes it automatically. So it's gonna ask me, you know, where should I put all these things? And then I'll, I'll click on import. And then what's gonna happen now, it's in my in my, my new file in which I, I import it and all the ones that can't be imported because they're duplicated will be in red. And that's, that's okay um, because we already have those. So the ones that cannot be imported um, are going to be in red, and we're going to ignore those, and that's and that's totally okay. And um, and I'll go ahead and click uh, I'll close it, okay. And then when I go into my chart of accounts, I'm going to go to chart of accounts, and what's going to end up happening is now I'm going to have a whole bunch of accounts that are uh, zero, right? Accounts that 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 are not used on the other company, uh, but but now they're there for the they're there as a peg holder to create the report. So now why did I do that? So let me just now justify that. So now when I pull a profit and loss report, and let me do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and pull a profit and loss report. This is the key component. So the first thing was uh, get, getting importing the chart of accounts from both sides, and the second key component is when I export a report, which I'm gonna export it now. I'm gonna include where it says show rows. I'm gonna include all. Okay, and that's this is the trick. This this was the trick. Importing the chart of accounts was not the trick. That was the the, the pre work. Exporting the PNL with all was the trick because once I do that, it's gonna include a whole bunch of accounts that have zeros next to it. But now I'll be able to align them uh, with with my other with my other account. So in the other uh, with the other um, financial statement. So the other important piece about this is strongly recommend that before you actually do the consolidation that you actually go through both chart of accounts and you look for things to consolidate. So for example, uh, automobile and car and truck expenses, that should be merged. So I should merge them in both sides. So merge them on one side, merge it on the other side, right? And then look for every opportunity to merge accounts that because when I import them in, I'm gonna have uh, quite a bit of duplicates. So once I do that, then I can export this financial statement. I'm gonna ex export that to Excel real quick. So now I can export this profit and loss from one company, and then I can also uh, export the profit and loss from the other company, and now I can actually copy and paste them uh, next to each other, um, because I do wanna do the um, the enterprise consolidation, so I'm not gonna do it here, but but you could you could follow along. I can I can copy and paste it to each other, and because the chart of accounts is identical, and I'm showing them all now, every single account is gonna line up, and then at the end I can just add one more column and and combine them. So I want to show you the actual example of taking both QuickBooks Online files uh, on the left, right side. On the left side I have Store One North, and on the right side I have Store Two North. And this is right after I exported both chart of accounts and combined them in both sides to be absolutely 100% sure that both QuickBooks Online files have the same exact chart of accounts, even if uh, some of the accounts are not being used in one and, or not being used on the other. The other sort of golden rule I covered earlier, um, I'm going to click on Customize, is that in this particular case, I want to make sure that I'm running the reports in collapse mode. They have to be collapsed. And I'm running show rows all, all rows. So I want to see all rows in both reports, right? If, if you have three companies, four companies, five companies, however many you're consolidating or grouping, um, you have to make sure that you're showing all rows for all of them. That way the accounts are not used on one, but used on the other are in both reports. And then the last thing I like to do is not, not 100% necessary, but here where it says show all numbers, so where it says show all numbers, I'm gonna uncheck except zero amounts. That way I, I actually get the zero amounts. I actually like uh, getting those. So I'm gonna go ahead and export both of these to Excel.
and I'm going to open both of them. So I have two distinct Excel files. So what I'm going to do is on the on one of them, so I have to pick one. On one of them, I'll change the title and put here both stores or something like that. And then here where it says total, I'll put store one. Okay, so all I'm doing is changing the title. And then I'm going to grab the data from the second profit and loss statement that I exported to Excel. Take the entire column there. I'm going to go ahead and copy that and put that into the other Excel data. So I'll put here paste. And basically, because I did show all, these accounts are going to line up perfectly. And that, that's the idea behind it. Right? And if it doesn't do it, like for example, in this case, it did, didn't do it by one, I have to uh, find out which is the account that caused this issue because it's not going to work like this. So a common reason why these accounts wouldn't uh, sync up like the way they did is when there's a presence of a deleted account. So anytime you have a deleted account, it is unlikely that you're going to have the exact same deleted account in both uh, chart of accounts. So unfortunately, by showing all, that will include the deleted accounts and that <clears throat> may screw up uh, with the number of accounts. So in order to fix this issue is whenever you see a deleted account, um, without a dollar amount, of course, but whenever you see it, you're going to go ahead and delete it. But before deleting it, we're going to select this entire row and we're going to copy it. And then we're going to paste uh, special values because the problem is if we delete a row, the formulas get all messed up. So by copying and pasting over itself with values, we won't get an issue with the formulas. So I'm going to go ahead and select that row there and delete it. Okay. And then now I should have the exact same order. So now I can copy that column, copy the entire column here and come to the other report that I want to consolidate and then uh, right click and paste the column here. That should actually now get me 100% lined up. That's perfect, actually. So I'm going to zoom it in so you can see it more clearly. And there it is. I'm going to go ahead and label this store two. Store two. Right. And as I scroll up and down, these are now perfectly consolidatable accounts. So at this, at this point, I can just skip a, a column here and then I can put here total. And I can use simple Excel formula equals this plus that, right? And then select that formula and I can just double click on that little box there. That would just duplicate my formulas all the way down or I can click and drag like this all the way down. And there are all my totals. Now, I want to copy some of that formatting that would be useful too. So I can just uh, copy one of the columns and then I can paste special over it and only paste in this case the formats. That way it brings in the font size, what's bold, what's not, underlining. And basically that's, um, call it the poor man's consolidation tool, right? Uh, no need for third party tools. This works uh, perfectly within Excel. Um, that actually didn't take at all that long. Uh, you can now print this report and it looks like a truly consolidated report. So was there any other questions that are important uh, that you think I should answer nope. before? Okay, no, all right. No. Nope. Okay, <laughs> perfect, thank you. <laughs> so now I'm, uh, I'm in QuickBooks Enterprise now and um, QuickBooks Enterprise is gonna be a lot easier uh, because I don't have, I have to export manually anything into uh, Excel. But the chart of accounts concept is the exact same thing. So when I have two QuickBooks files uh, with, with two different uh, chart of accounts and you know p potentially uh, duplicating, let me just do here this fiscal year. So we can have potentially duplicating uh, accounts like one says automobile, one says car and truck. When I when I export these uh, doing the consolidation tool, and I'll show you exactly how the cons the combination tool works. Um, uh, you're going to see that some accounts are going to cross each other. And by the way, this is the same exact chart of accounts that I used in QBO, so you'll be able to appreciate it once I do the combination. So the combination is done by clicking on reports and clicking on combine reports from multiple companies. And again, this only works in QuickBooks Enterprise, and every single company needs to be in QuickBooks Enterprise. So I go to combine reports from multiple companies, and then in here, I'm going to click on add files. So I'm going to select... Uh, the multiple companies that I'm working with. So in this case, we have uh, store one and store two, right? These are the two stores I want to combine. And then in here, I get to choose uh, the date range. 
Okay, so in this case, I'm gonna choose the beginning all the way to the end. And then I get to choose here under uh, the, re the reports, I get to select what is it that I want to combine. So I wanna select, I wanna combine balance sheet standard, I wanna combine profit and loss standard, and let's say I wanna combine profit and loss by class. And that, that's an important one for uh, eliminating intercompany transactions. Only if you did what I said, which is make sure that all intercompany transactions are tagged under a class called intercompany. And I'll, I'll show you in the Excel file, that should make a lot of sense. Um, so I'm gonna put here, I'm gonna give it a title called stores combined. So I give it a title for the Excel report. Here on the Excel options, there's a, a, a few very critical things that we have to pick. The most important one, the single most important one, is I have to make sure that this option called auto outline, auto outline, that needs to be checked. Okay, so you can't ignore that one. You have to check auto outline, and I'm gonna. This is gonna make tons of sense once I once I show the report. And then I'm gonna click on uh, combine reports into Excel, and then it goes through the process. Okay, so I'm not gonna hit OK now because it sometimes takes five minutes, and that would be a lot of wasted time watching me wait for the report to be created. So I created the report uh, beforehand. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that report to show you exactly what that's gonna look like after it's been combined. But I do wanna show you uh, a couple of things first. So one is if I had one company file with account numbers and a, another company file without account numbers, then I'm gonna get a real messy consolidation. I'm gonna get this issue here. Let me um, zoom this in a little bit more. Oh, that's too much. So let me zoom it in to maybe 125% so you can see better. Okay, so what happens is if I have in, in one chart of accounts, I have account numbers, and in the other one I don't, then it looks very ugly. So the first thing I'm gonna strongly recommend is either have, have account numbers in all company files or don't have account numbers in all company files. That's an extremely important piece there. Okay, so I'm gonna close that out because I actually cleaned that out and then I took away uh, the account numbers. Um, so this is what it looks like after I take away the account numbers and I actually went in and I cleaned out some of the chart of accounts and let me collapse these here. So I'm gonna collapse this here and show you what the PNL looks like. So for example, uh, in this particular case, and if you notice, I'm sort of uh, clicking uh, the plus and the minus pretty fast and these things are opening and closing pretty fast. That's what these things are here. Uh, the one, two, three, four, these are uh, collapse levels and that's what that auto outline option was for. So that's why I said it's very important for you to be able to collapse and expand accounts and, and classes and, and things like that. All right, so so what you're seeing here in this case, uh, we're gonna go to automobile expense. So in this particular case, what I did was I actually went in into both QuickBooks files and I and I exported the chart of accounts from one, imported it on the other, and vice versa. And just real quick, how you do that is you go to File, uh, Utilities, Export, List to IAF. Okay, so this is how you export your chart of accounts. And then you click OK, and then you save that somewhere. Okay, and then once you open the other file, you go to File, Utilities, Import, IAF file. You pick up the chart of accounts from there, hit import, and that's gonna bring the chart of accounts from one QuickBooks file to the other. And then you repeat the same thing on the other QuickBooks file, export it and import it. And this is kind of the issue when you have five, six, seven, ten 10 companies that you actually, it's very cumbersome. You have to make sure either from the very beginning, from your planning stage, you actually went in there and created one chart of accounts and the users never created an account and everybody respected the chart of accounts, then you don't have to go through this drama. But if, if, if that's not the case, you're gonna have to go out there and make sure that every single file has the same chart of accounts. If not, the consolidation is just gonna look really, really strange. But the, the secondary exercise to that is after the chart of accounts is, is copied, throughout all the companies, we have to identify the potential redundant ones. That way, when we come into here, we don't have a column that says auto expense and one that says car expense. We have them consolidated into just one called auto expense. But I'm gonna go ahead and zoom this in, I mean, and, and, and expand it to show you. In one QuickBooks file, I had these five sub accounts, car lease, gas, insurance, mileage, repairs. And those are coming, once I expand the account, it's very obvious that these are only on store two <coughs> but, and, and not really in store one. But then when I see fuel, insurance, repairs and maintenance, which are basically redundant. 
uh, these are only on store one. So this this type of thing looks very confusing and very ugly because we haven't consolidated yet. This is why I recommend sometimes creating those parent accounts, making them a sub accounts. Make sure all the parent accounts have the same name. That way, if you do want to have a variation across different QuickBooks files, uh, the variations are only on the sub accounts, not on the parent accounts. Okay, now I'm gonna jump into the balance sheet. And Michelle, are there any questions uh, before I uh, I do uh, balance sheet? Are there any questions? Um, yeah, there was there was a question about if you needed to delete the account numbers before doing it. Um, but you've only got four minutes left, so you might want to get into enterprise. <laughs> uh, actually, we were in enterprise just now. I just want to make sure that we don't miss out on that. We were in enterprise, okay. um, and that that Excel file that I'm showing you was created through the consolidation tool in enterprise. So there's really nothing else in enterprise that we need to do other than that we have to run the consolidation tool from there. And I want to make sure that wasn't missed out. That's here on the reports menu under combined reports. This window, it's only on QuickBooks Enterprise, and that was the way that we created the Excel file. Uh, so um, did you? Go ahead. Do you need to manually delete the account numbers? Somebody was asking. No, no. So what I recommend to do is enable or disable account numbers in the in the in QuickBooks. So we're talking about going into Edit, Preferences, Accounting, Company Preferences, and then choosing to have um have account numbers in all the files or don't have account numbers in. That, that's the point I was trying to make. Either have account numbers in all or don't have account numbers in any. Thank you. Okay. Now, the, the other piece I want to talk to you about is, for example, if you look at this account called prepaids, okay, um, if, if you had an account called intercompany loan in both QuickBooks files where you were having one company uh, pay the other company, and then in one QuickBooks file, you have it as a negative, and the other QuickBooks file, you have it as a positive. In theory, if everything is recorded correctly, that intercompany loan should net out to zero. The big problem is that most people will put the loan receivable on the asset side on company A and the loan payable on the liability side on company B, and you're going to end up with a positive number on an asset, a, a, a positive number on liability, which pretty much nets each other out, but it looks strange in a consolidated format. So whenever you're looking at a total like this, what you don't want is to have a asset and liability match each other and then you know in your mind that that's just intercompany. It's just easier to have just a single intercompany uh, transaction where both the negatives and the positives are there. And, um, and at the end of the day, the consolidation uh, turns out to zero. So the last piece I want to show you is um, uh, profit and loss by class. So this is, uh, this is through the same uh, enterprise consolidation tool. It actually exported uh, the PNL by class and through the auto collapsing tool, like I actually have them in a very clean way. But if I actually open these by clicking on that plus sign, I'm actually going to get a PNL by class. But what I want to show you real quick here before I turn it on to uh, Michelle, uh, I want to show you real quick is that I do have one class in QuickBooks Enterprise called Intercompany. And I guess I sold something to the other store showing up here as 100,000. If I open up uh, the other store, so I'm going to open up the other store real quick, um, that's going to show up as an expense, right? Because it's, it's revenue for one, expense on the other, right? So it's a sale on one side, it's a cost on the other side. That's going to show up as an expense. And what I want to avoid is to report an income and an expense that are essentially intercompany. So let me hit here. Uh, by class, so you can see it. So there it is. So now you can see it there under subcontractor, 100,000. So what I want to avoid is when I'm looking at this financial report, and let me collapse these again. So I'm going to collapse these totally. So what I'm, I'm avoiding to see is that on the revenue side and the cost of goods sold, sold side, which is the two accounts that I use, these are both overstated by 100,000. Um, so it's very cumbersome to have to manually remove intercompany transactions, but it's actually quite easy if you do that technique where you put them under intercompany class, because then you can identify them here real quick, and you can just basically, right here, I can just replace that 100,000 with a zero, right? So it's just literally doing something in Excel, and then I'll move on to the next one, and then I should have, in this case, now this is a cost of goods sold for 100,000, replace that with zero, and that's actually a pretty simple uh, concept. And then when I'm looking at this financial statements collapsed, um, the gross profit in this case is the same because it was 
positive 100 minus negative 100, but I don't overstate my income and I don't overstate my cost of goods sold. That's, that's basically a cheat sheet, a quick way to, um, to, to remove intercompany transactions. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Miraculously, I was able to cover everything during my time. So Michelle, do you wanna take over? Do you have slides? Well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Charles, um, and he's going to show us how easy that is to do in Cavinci. And Hector, there are some questions there, if you could type those in. Um, but thank you for showing that. Charles, do you want to unmute yourself? Uh, I am unmuted. Do you, you have me? There we go. Thank you, Charles. Okay. Charles Charles Nagel is the founder and chief innovation officer of Cavinci. So we're very glad to have you joining us. And Charles, I look forward to you showing him how easy it is with your tool, Cavinci. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you, Hector and uh, and Michelle for having us. Uh, we'll move very quickly, just like Hector did. Uh, I was doing some timing, Hector, and uh, it takes a little while to do that uh, manually, even with QuickBooks uh, Enterprise and, Des uh, and classes and so forth. Imagine uh, doing that with 10, 15, 20 classes or 10, 15, 20 QuickBooks Online files. Yeah, what I don't have to is, it. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, QVinci is a reporting solution. What we do is we'll connect, we collect and connect to all forms of QuickBooks, Zero, Excel, and MYOB. We sync the data in to our SAS, our online reporting solution. And we do all the things that Hector was just showing with consolidation, reporting, benchmarking, side by side, and quite a few things more, but, but without all the pain. And the, the mapping process that we have um, is patented. So I'm going to take you into how QVinci does what Hector did. Now you're inside the QVinci application. The first point of entry in the, in the application is a dashboard layer. In this account, we have 21 QuickBooks files. Some are QuickBooks Online, some are QuickBooks uh, Desktop. And I will also mention that we can handle classes as though they were a separate reporting entity or locations as they were a separate reporting entity. And I'll get into that in just a minute. So you're looking at a consolidated dashboard across all those locations. And if you wanted to look at, uh, you can see all the locations here. If I just want to look at Austin, I'd simply click Austin and I would see Austin. That's, we just named the files Austin. They can be the name of anything that you want. It might be the name of a store number, if you will. So you and your clients can log in and look at the files, uh, reports that they are entitled to, and you set them up as the pro advisor, the bookkeeper. You set them up with access. But let's go do a consolidation combination like Hector was talking about. It's a direct alignment. You click the reporting tab, and you build and memorize reports. So I'm going to build a profit and loss consolidated by month, not just total for the year. Let's do it by month and let's total it this calendar year to date. And we have our, you can see that we have our account mapping tool turned on. We're going to map it. Um, into the standardized chart of accounts. So remember when Hector was saying, you need to have the same chart of accounts in all those QuickBooks files. Well, that's not reality because clients will do things to it. Account mapping in QVinci takes the disparateness across the QuickBooks files. And I should mention that we can consolidate 1,000 QuickBooks files in a matter of seconds. Um, but um, the, uh, what you can do is uh, turn on mapping like this and build a report and it's going to consolidate, map, uh, uh, combine all those files by month through the year across all 21 QuickBooks files. And you can pan to the right and scroll down and look at all the locations uh, side by side, uh, scrolling through all the files and seeing them in a standardized chart of accounts. Now, what QVinci will do for you also, where it gets powerful, let will go back to the reporting tool, the, the map tool. I can do the P&L and I can also say, I can look at them by location. Now we call them locations, but location is nothing more than a financial file. It's a financial file. And so it can be a class, it can be QuickBooks Online, it can be QuickBooks Enterprise, it can be zero. So let's look at a P&L side by side uh, for the year to date across all those locations. Well, now I'm looking at the P&L for Austin. And this might be QuickBooks Online, and this is a desktop, and this is a class and a class and a class inside a single QuickBooks file and Excel, zero, and that sort of thing. And it's all brought in and synced in and put in the standardized chart of accounts that you create. So you as a pro advisor or as the admin on the account would create a standard reporting structure for your clients. And as the data syncs in, we put it in the standard. So remember when Hector was talking about automobiles and cars and trucks? Um, some people call it rent, some people call it lease. We put a whitelist against the standardized chart of accounts, and as we scan the data and bring it in, we'll put it into the chart of accounts that you want. Now, one thing you can do is 
you may want to look at them organically. So I can click the Options tab, and I can turn account mapping off, and I can rebuild this. And now we are consolidating them with the native chart of accounts in those QuickBooks files. And you can see that it got a whole lot bigger. Now I've got a, you know 4,900 miscellaneous parts. Kavichi will actually consolidate the non-standardized charts of accounts across all those locations. So you can get it both ways. The other things you can do is you can say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to run this report again, and uh, I'm going to build a PNL. Let me do it this way. I'm going to build a PNL again, and let's build it uh, by location, as opposed to consolidated. And you know, I start and analyzing this data, and I'm looking, and I go, oh wait a minute, what's what's wrong with Austin? This miscellaneous parts income is only 105 to 70. Well, what you can do is you can go to the locations and you can say, just give me Austin. Uh, I don't want to look at everybody. I just want to see Austin because that's what I have a right to, uh, to see. I'm going to apply the filter and it builds a report. And here's Austin. Now you can turn off, uh, you could go into the account mapping mode, turn off account mapping that quickly. And now I'm looking at the native PNL balance sheet, statement of cash flows, native data inside Austin, one, many, or all locations. So you can see that you can handle clients very simply that have one file, two files, 10 classes, 20 classes, 1,000 classes, and you and your clients can log in and look at the results together. Uh, how many clients will actually log in and run highly detailed reports that they have to build uh, that are difficult to construct? Well, Kivenshi makes it very easy for you to build and memorize those reports. So you may go in for a client. You may say, I'm going to memorize the uh, your three-store P&L for last fiscal year. I've memorized it. My client logs in, and there's the P&L by location standardized and consolidated in the right-hand corner that quickly. Again, online, desktop, desktop. We don't care. Uh, it's We're a little bit agnostic as to the type of file that there is. Of course, all reports can be exported to Excel. So you can export them to Excel. Uh, other things you can do, when you can do that, you can begin to do certain things like this, and this is truly valuable for your clients. You can do peer benchmarking, and this will play into the conversation we're going to have in a little bit about franchises. You know, when you have a client that has 10, 15 locations, five locations, or if they're part of a franchise, having those managers of those locations and or at the top layer be able to benchmark against each other is invaluable. I simply click peer benchmarking, and I say, you know what I want to do? I want to look at all of my locations. All of the ones I have, all 21, compared to the top 10% of the ecosystem for the PL this calendar year, last three months, whatever the date flow you want to have, and you simply uh, fill the report. So I have still have my, my location, my three locations selected. I own those three locations. Remember, we had those selected. My three locations against the average of the top 21, top 10% of the 21. So I can look at one, many, or all. If I want to look at them all, I simply go. Back over to filter locations, select all locations, apply the filters, and here's the same report that quickly. The average of the top 10% ecosystem and all the locations in the ecosystem in a standard against the standardized chart of accounts. When you want to know more, you might want to do this. Let's turn on vertical analysis. So you can see we go far beyond just com combination and consolidation. I want to look at vertical analysis across all these locations. I rebuild the report. VA says I'm going to take the actual numbers and take the percent of uh, Take the percent of total income. I didn't turn it on. Hold on a second. Let me do that again. PL, by location, vertical analysis. Thank you. So, uh, oh, I said I didn't have to turn it on. So, you can build vertical analysis across the 21 units, and it'll give you the percentages next to each other. And then you can be, begin to compare and contrast them to each other. I guess I don't have that turned on on this, uh, on this particular uh, account. The other thing you can do is you can rank them. You can take your locations and build a ranking report, and it'll show you all the locations in the, in the, according to these filters, net income, ascending, my most profitable one. My, I click that column, and it comes back with my least profitable one, whether you have one, 20, 500 locations. And there's certain things you can do uh, to manage your locations. You can add users, delete users, and so forth. But as you can see with a solution like this, is that it's real easy to run p &L, balance sheet, ratios, ratio analysis, sales by customer, expense by vendor, all kinds of reports, standardized and combining them uh, uh, up in a standardized chart of accounts. Now, one of the things that we're going to show you in uh, just a little bit is another tool that will allow you to analyze the data uh, and forecast it. It's called the Performa, where you can begin to extend 
the analysis of these tools, uh, peer benchmarking, and look at uh, solutions across, uh, project where the roadmap is going to be on a per location basis. So imagine that you can now take this peer benchmark data and you can now run a report that shows you in Austin what you need to be doing on a line item basis this month, next month, the previous, the next month, and subsequent months, all the way through the end of the year on a line item basis compared to the top 10% in the ecosystem. So in a, in a nutshell, uh, very briefly, you, you, know, you, you can look at uh, whether you have QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Desktop, Excel. Your clients are probably all over the map. They use all kinds of different tools. Givenchy gives you a presentation letter that gives it to you graphically, but then allows you to granular, granularly log in and look at one or many units painlessly, very, very easily, and it's online. It runs on a, a, any Droid device, any internet-enabled device, highly secure, and you and your clients can look at the, look at the solution. One of the things that we were going to go through next are some of the value props uh, of Kivinci for pro-advisors and bookkeepers. Charles, before you yes. move on, can I just ask you one question? Several people were asking, they noticed in there you had all these unmapped accounts, and they were asking about uh, the top line on income said unmapped. How, can you show them how to do that and how to identify accounts that were unmapped and deal with that? Yeah, uh, now the, the mapping, uh, we're not in an admin account right now, so I can't uh, take you into oh, the okay. mapping tool, but I, but I can unmap and show you what it means. So unmapped means we have a mapping tool internally in Kivinci, and I know we don't have enough time budget for this one, which we have webinars we're going to invite you to later on where we can run these demos for you. But unmapped means that it found something in, um, let me go back and run this uh, by location, and it's a little more revealing, PNL by location. Um, when I run unmapped by location, it says I got 862,115 of, of income in Austin that I don't know what that is. And if I were to turn off account mapping, I would see what those were. Well, we have a tool that once you identify this, you can click into that tool and it'll show you across all locations the names of the accounts that are not mapped. So perhaps a client went in and they add an account. I've actually seen an account called Thingy. Uh, so you never know what someone's done in their file, and you can literally go in and say, you know what, uh, they call this uh, engine oversales, and you can actually click that, or your client can click that and map it to ink sales if that's what you want to do. So it's a it's a quick way of saying, I have something in a chart of accounts that doesn't match the standard. We let you uh, turn off account mapping, interrogate where it is, and then have a very quick process of mapping it to the standard. Sometimes we see that mostly when people have owner. Um, compensation type things uh, where they've or they've made a loan uh, in, in a certain they have an expense and they you know gave money to uh, their nephew or something along those lines you sometimes people commingle their personal finances with their corporate finances so you'll begin to see those kinds of things uh, the mapping process works like this very briefly you set up the SCOA and you put a white list of keywords against it lease rent insurance of various types and so Usually, it does a very good job of catching the top 85, 90% of incoming disparateness. And then you have the outliers, outliers where someone names something a very strange name as a general rule. Uh, but there's a methodology for you to trap that and, uh, and map that over. It probably takes about 15 minutes to present that. Uh, and again, we probably present that on the webinar that we're going to invite you folks to. Are there any other questions about Kivinci at this point? Um, there's actually quite a few um, that I've been assigning to Roman and Caitlin, but if you would want to go ahead and, and get into the slides, um, because I know you've got some important things, and I, I want to be able for accountants and bookkeepers to realize how we can use this amazing tool, because it is great. So if you could share some of that with us, um, I think sure. it would be fabulous. And I do have and a question, I know that Michelle's Charles, real quick. I do have a ahead. question. So <clears throat> somebody actually emailed me directly and asked me this via email randomly. Um, if I have a client with zero, another client with QuickBooks uh, online, uh, sorry, the same client with a different location, QuickBooks online, and then one more with desktop. So that means I have one company in zero, one in online, one in desktop. Can this consolidate all three? Absolutely. So here's the list of the companies that we were just working on, and I'll even take it further than that. Uh, so let's consider that these are financial files. This can be a QuickBooks desktop file. This can be online, zero. This can be a class. Uh, uh, these four files can be classes inside zero, classes inside desktop, locations inside uh, uh, QuickBooks Online, classes inside QuickBooks Online. So we handle 
every permutation. So, and this is what we see a lot. We have, uh, uh, I'll give you an example. We have, uh, this is some of our customers. I'll give you an example. So we have a lot of franchises, and we have some business services and not for not for profits and so forth. And what will happen is across these types of clients here, you know, you got a restaurant here. The restaurant, one restaurant will be running QuickBooks Pro 2015, and another one will be running QuickBooks Online. And another another guy, he'll be a multi-unit operator, and he'll have QuickBooks Desktop with numerous classes in it. Well, what Qvinci does is it handles all of those cases, and so the reporting entity will be either a class or a type of QuickBooks or a type of Zero or Excel. Perfect. Thank you. That makes sense. Yep, totally. Okay. So. Um, Kivinci has a partnership for uh, pro advisors and bookkeepers, and uh, this deck is going to be sent by uh, by Michelle and Hector to every attendee here. And these are hot links, and you can come in and take a webinar with us. Uh, just pick a date and time. You click that link, it'll take you and take the date and time that you want, and we will take you through a detailed presentation for pro advisors and accountants and bookkeepers. So some of the benefits uh, we have pro advisors. I'll give you an example. I have a pro advisor that has 50 clients on Kivinci, saves him eight billable hours because he just doesn't do the reporting anymore. He gives he sets up Kivinci for his clients, memorizes the reports like I showed you. The clients log in and look at the dashboards and look at the reports, and he does the outsourced bookkeeping and he keeps the books clean and straight. The clients get a reporting mechanism. In this case study, again, when you get this deck, you can read Randall the Hart's Fast Easy Accounting case study here. So it increases value for you, the pro advisor, to their clients, and it's going to increase revenue. Uh, we have referral and reseller programs for pro advisors. Some people just want to refer. Some people want to resell and bundle it in. You can, it's your choice, whichever one you like to do. We can brand Qvinci for you uh, with your brand in the top left-hand corner of the application. If you, have, if you have a sophisticated client that's a larger entity, we have an API where data can actually pull, be pulled from, quick, from Qvinci and taken into other systems. It's a very fast onboarding process. We handle clients up to thousands of files, and we have solutions that do certain things like health check, checking the back, checking your uh, file integrity status. It works with all versions of QuickBooks, and we have dashboards of detailed reporting, and as I showed you, consolidation and benchmarking. Then some of the value for your clients are um, we have a custom report builder that will be available within the next 30 days, where you can actually go in and say, I'm going to build a KPI for my client, and because that's what he wants to look at, right? These four things he wants to monitor. Uh, peer benchmarking. If you're a part of a, a group and you have 5, 10, 15, 25, 100 um, files in a, of, a, uh, of a certain type and kind, construction companies, that sort of thing, you can do peer benchmarking, which is invaluable because the best benchmarking you can do is against real-world people such as yourself. Obviously, consolidation, best practice forecasting based on peer performance. Again, the performa is available that will show you the roadmap of where you're going. Online and mobile reporting. You know, I've had people call me and say, uh, hey, Charles, I, I just looked at my dashboard and hit my second tee shot. Uh, so it's, it's convenience of being able to see the data that they want to see, your clients want to see on their mobile device is important. Target and threshold emails. Now, the, one of the important things, guys, is that we automatically sync the data. The QuickBooks desktop, whether it's at Right Networks at a hosted company or it's on a uh, laptop, there's a little sync client that gets downloaded and it automatically syncs the data every day that you or somebody logs into that QuickBooks file. Your users don't have to do anything. In the case of Zero and QuickBooks Online, we sync automatically every morning at midnight. So the data syncing and collection is always up to date automatically. You don't have to do anything. And the custom KPIs, and one of the best things we have, we are here in Austin, Texas, our support is free. So in a nutshell, it looks like this. You've got quick, you've got clients out there. This is QuickBooks Online, Desktop, and Zero, or classes. The sync automatically happens. It comes to Kivinci, and the reports go to you and your client. We can handle thousands of files coming into, uh, from a reporting perspective, into your portal. And you can see that we have uh, again the side by side. And again, this is a, we'll have this in the deck for you. It shows a little bit about how the UI looks and how the, uh, some of the types of reports that are here. You can look at three locations, benchmark locations, side by side. It's a low cost subscription. We have live chat support, online help documentation. And of course, since we're a SaaS solution, there are no costs for updates. A Couple of things about security. It's highly scalable. Uh, we're fully PCI compliant, it's patented. We're at SAS 71 and SAS, one, SAS uh, uh, SAR 123, SC 123 compliant. And we don't sync any fraud-sensitive type data. This is really important. 
Uh, we don't take credit card data. We don't take social security numbers, employee data, checking account numbers. We're syncing and reporting on uh, reporting data. So uh, breaching uh, clients, uh, any of your clients' uh, confidential information is just not part of what we do. We only take uh, uh, high-end uh, summary type data. Again, so here's these here's these uh, uh, these webinars that we're going to have for you. You'll get the deck and invite you to join. Just pick the date that you want and whatnot. We have people standing by that will uh, be more than happy to uh, to give you a personal demo. Well, so Charles, you know, Rebecca posted something in the the chat room here or in the questions that said, "Gee, I wish I had clients that had multiple entities so I could use this tool." <laughs> and so Charles, I wanted you to share what you and I talked about. I and I think a lot of us accounting professionals assume that all oh, these franchises, have, you know, like let's say a restaurant franchise that has multiple locations, they probably already know what they're doing and have an accountant. And can you share your insights on some of these franchises that are out there? And then I'd like to share a way that we can find them and target some of them to help us to grow our practice. And Michelle, sure. what I forget, uh, yeah. Charles doesn't forget, there's people asking about pricing. Uh, pricing hasn't been disclosed. Okay. Uh, well, let me uh, let me talk about the franchise thing real quick, and then I'll end up I'll, I'll wrap it up with the pricing. Uh, so we we are into its franchise reporting solution. We're the solution that they recommend when they and not just franchises. It's anything multi. Uh, if you look, if you remember looking at our client list, we have Catholic diocese as clients. We call it the one to many paradigm. And so there are a lot of SMBs that have more than one financial file. Uh, in the case of franchises. Um, they do require, they have a thing called an FDD, the Franchise Development Document. And all franchisees sign this document, and, and I've never seen one yet where they didn't, they weren't required to report their financials to what we call the mothership or the franchisor. But the problem is, is as, as you saw um, with Hector, it's not very easy to do. And if you, I, I've actually talked to a franchise that got 86 faxes a month. If you think it's hard using Excel, try consulting 86 faxes. So uh, they don't have, they may have standardized uh, requirements for reporting, but they haven't had a standardized way to facilitate it. And so they they very rarely, I, it's very rare that you find a franchise that has everybody on QuickBooks Online or everybody on the same version of QuickBooks Desktop, and everybody has the exact same chart of accounts. It just does not happen. It, it doesn't happen. So um, well, what you have is franchises who uh, require reporting but no way to do it and but what they need at these locations is also great accounting a lot you know someone that owns that the franchisee that owns uh, you know maybe a, a chicken place or a, or a or flowers they're subject matter experts they know the flowers but they're not accountants and bookkeepers so there's a huge opportunity for uh, accountants and bookkeepers to go in and, and add value to a franchisee or a network of franchisees and, and by the way I will tell you most franchisees are multi-unit owners you have to own three or four. You can't make a living. So, uh, especially of you know, like a like a like a retail type place or a, or a, a kiosk or or a fast food. Those are, you, you just have to own more than one. And so you've got multiple files, multiple reporting combinations, and consolidated reporting. And they need better accounting. So it's a great opportunity for a uh, for accountants to provide a holistic service, outsource bookkeeping, advisory, and reporting. And, and Charles and and I couldn't agree with you more. And, and I'm sharing something on the screen right now called Reference USA. And this is where if you want to start targeting some of these franchises and stuff, this is a free tool where you can look them up and you can find some of the franchises in your area. So this is an online database that's available from many libraries, most of the public libraries or community colleges or whatever. For example, my public library, I can access Reference USA database from home, but I have to have a library card. But it's free. It allows you to go in and search for businesses both in the US and Canada. So I've got a screenshot here. I went in and said I wanted to look for uh, food, food places. I wanted to look for restaurants in the Kansas City metro area and you can see it gives me a list. There's like 4,500 results but at a glance you can see there's four a and W restaurants. There's three Adrian cafes so you can locate these entities that you know are franchises that may be potential clients for you 
pick up the phone, give them a call, ask them how they're doing, if they need help seeing the consolidated reports of their entities and things. It's a great opportunity for us to kind of target some of these businesses. Um, so Charles, I, I like sharing that information because um, you're right, they do need our help and it is a good opportunity for us. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, the, the, there are 805,000 franchisee locations in this country that are just part of the IFA, the International Franchise Association. That's not counting just the independents out there. So there are uh, you, you know, almost a million businesses. And some of these guys will have, uh, again, they're all multi-unit type offers. I did want to address one thing, though, uh, on the, uh, the statement you said, I wish I had more multi-unit type entities. Um, and what I'd like to do, if I could, Michelle, is, uh, um, is share one thing here again in just a second uh, that I think will, uh, will uh, perhaps uh, uh, kind of address uh, address that opportunity. Uh, if you have a lot of locations, and I don't know, Michelle, okay. if you could make me the presenter real quick uh, again. Well, oh, actually, do we have time? Well, so Charles, I'm going to go ahead and launch the CPE poll question uh, okay. because some yeah. people have a hard stop at the top of the hour. But I tell you what, those of you that can stick around for another five, ten minutes, um, let us continue on with some of this. But for those of you that do have a hard stop at the top of the hour, I've launched the poll question. So go ahead and answer that CPE poll question. And then, um, Charles, if you can hang around a few minutes longer, we'll do that for those of you who can stay with us. Sure. Um, those of you that do have to jump on, you'll get a follow-up email with a link with the slides where you can um, go in and register for those follow-up webinars um, to learn more about Convinci because it is a very amazing tool. Um, we talked about the consolidations, but the dashboard um, is really amazing as well. Um, so I encourage you to sign up for those additional webinars um, to learn more about that. Okay, and some of you said thanks for holding him over a little longer. So, Charles, let us uh, go ahead and finish off this poll, and then we'll uh, turn it back over to you. Um, if you guys need CPE, please answer the poll question quickly um, so that we can move along. Um, go ahead and answer this poll question if you need the CPE. And uh, some more questions on can Covinci be used with Excel reports? Yes, you can pull in Excel, QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Online, Zero, and you can have each location, as Charles mentioned earlier, using a different method, and you can consolidate all of that from within Covinci. Um, all right, last call for this poll question. If you need CPE credit, please answer the poll. I'm going to give you about 10 more seconds, and that's it. Um, so if anybody needs it, please answer the poll question. And we need to move on. A few people must have missed it because they're guessing and they're getting it wrong. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Closing that. Okay. Now, Charles, you wanted me to pass it back to you. So I am passing control back over to you now. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to point out, I had an operator error. That vertical analysis piece, here's a vertical analysis piece where you look at the income and the uh, percentages and that sort of thing. Um, when you have singles, we call them singles, let's say that you specialize and you have, in the case of Randall DeHart, all of his clients are in the construction business. So you can still do peer benchmarking even against people, uh, for people that are, that are singles, if you have like kinds. So what you'll do with QVinci is you will add them into, um, combine them into the same QVinci company. They can't see each other, but they're part of an ecosystem, let's say it that way. So maybe you have 10, 15 clients that are all, you specialize in the uh, in the uh, orthopedic surgeon kind of thing. So when you put them in there, they can do the peer benchmarking exactly the same way. Well, one of the byproducts that you can do, whether it's a franchise or uh, you've got these independent single type businesses, you can do things like this with your clients. You can click, for instance, Austin. I'm going to go into this, into this business here. It's one location. And what we do is we take the best practice across all the locations or all the financial files, a peer group, if you will, and we map that vertical analysis I just showed you, the percent of total income, on the financials of Austin. Now, Austin only sees Austin, but what this says is green is good and red is bad. So on a this chart of accounts, here's the chart of accounts here. So in this case, Ford cost of goods is $23,500 for Austin, and the peer group only spends $8,656.64.
And if you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to end at 57,750. So you can imagine if you have a group, I don't care if they're singles, but they're all in the same industry, you know, uh, uh, chiropractors, um, a group of chiropractors, or, or it actually is uh, a company that has 5, 10, 15, 25 files. You, whether you have singles or, or, or individual uh, or, uh, or uh, franchises, you can begin to use a tool like this, our Performa tool, and your locations, your clients can log in and see, you know, where's the roadmap to success? I want to behave like the top 10% like me so this tells me what I need to spend what the thresholds are and it tells me it tells me by month what I need to be doing you know what I, and it tells me what I did in July whether I hit target or didn't hit target based on and an Charles, actual I, peer group I, I think that's great and I love the graphical it makes it easy to get we still have some questions about the pricing um, could you talk about that for us sure uh, well so Kibichi is we price at the reporting file level you got a copy of QuickBooks online, it's $14.95 per month retail. As a pro advisor, if you sign up with us as a reseller, you get a 30% discount for that location. And that is the only charge that we have. We don't charge for users, we don't charge for syncs for reporting. It's the financial file or, or location that is syncing in. It's a flat fee. Uh, now, of course, if you if you go out and you bring us a, a, a McDonald's, you know, you're going to get <laughs> pretty big price discounts on uh, 60 on 40,000 units. But uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a very simple it's a very simple pricing model. Uh, $14.95 per month retail, and you as a reseller get a 30% discount. Uh, if you go to our website at kibinchi.com, you can see how to sign up as a reseller or a referral partner, depending on what you want to do. If you just want to refer, you don't want to resell, uh, then you refer your clients to us. We have a a very easy process. And we take them home and, and monetize them, and we send a nice referral fee, a uh, very nice referral fee to you uh, for sending us that referral. And Charles, we also had a question about QBox. Does it work when, when somebody's using QBox to share desktop files? Um, will this work in that situation? I can't, I, you know, I can't say if it's going to work with QBox or not. Uh, I will say that the, uh, the Sync app uh, needs to be running, if it's a desktop version, the Sync app needs to be running wherever QuickBooks is running. So we do run in hosted environments, uh, uh, you know, Right Networks and uh, Cloud9 and the you know, Novel Aspect and all those hosting companies. So uh, it would be something we'll have to take a look at uh, to see. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, and so then also, um, let's see, Hector, did you have any questions that you wanted to ask too? Uh, that was that was my question. The Q box. There, there was another question, interesting about um, canceling intercompany transactions. So I, I mentioned the challenge behind that. That's why I used the word combination and not consolidation. Um, Charles, have, do you have a solution for canceling intercompany? Yeah, we do. Identifying intercompany. Yeah, we do. We, sure. What, so what our clients typically do is uh, they will create a fictitious um, QuickBooks file. And they'll put all those intercompany transfers in that file such that when we do our combination, uh, everything balances out. So, you know, when I showed you these locations here, you would just create a, 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 a class if you wanted to, uh, if you had a class file or a QuickBooks file, and just put your intercompany transfers inside that file. And when we consolidate them up, everything's going to fall out. Very similar to what you showed uh, in the Excel, uh, uh, the enterprise methodology. Okay. So it's it's still a workaround. It's not a built-in uh, solution yet. But that, that that is an interesting workaround, though. I can I can think about that. I can see how that would work. Yeah, it's 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 probably the it's a it's probably the simplest way to do something like that. Given that you may have uh, again, one file may be a QuickBooks Online file and one may be a desktop file. So you know if you're going to handle that, then you, we'll let you pick whatever you want to do, whichever uh, uh, tool you'd like to use and uh, online or, or a class or whatever, and just put those transactions in that one file. Okay. I should mention one other thing real quickly. Uh, these are called properties and filters over here. So imagine logging to eBay and looking for cameras that are black that are made by Nikon. When you have a larger entity, sometimes they want to compare. We have a client that likes to compare themselves by square footage of their stores. These properties can be customized by you. So you can have age of business, number of employees, number of drive through lanes. Comparing businesses of like kind, uh, you know, you're going to compare businesses that have two drive-through lanes that have 10 employees is a pretty good comparison, right? 
So a commission is very powerful when it comes to the analysis side. We automate the collection across all these different types of files, but it's the business intelligence that you can take away because of the, the way we built the application that makes, uh, makes your client's decisions just better. Okay, Charles, this is absolutely fabulous, and I hope people will take the time uh, to attend one of your webinars because this is an amazing tool, and it's a great opportunity for us to not only add value for our clients, but to grow and expand our business by targeting some of these multi-unit uh, entities, um, multiple entities. So um, thank you, Charles, and again, I hope some of you will attend um, the follow-up webinars that he has offered where you can learn more about it um, and watch for a... a um, video from me. I'm going to put a video out there about Reference USA and how you can use that. Um, so keep an eye out for that. I'll put that out on YouTube and probably do a blog post about it. Um, so follow me with that if you'd like to see that. And you can target not just multiple entities, um, but others that you might be after as well. If you're looking for you know, construction clients or lawn and landscape clients or whatever it is, it's a great tool that allows you to search for specific types of businesses in a specific area. Um, so there's lots of questions there. We will be providing uh, this list to, um, to Charles and them so they can follow up with those, those of you that did not get your questions answered. Uh, but remind you about some upcoming QB Power Hour webinars. Remember, next week is a special time. It's not at our normal time of noon Eastern, but at 1 o'clock. Um, and so Hector and I will be talking about advanced bank fees and value pricing. So you don't want to miss that one. And here's some other upcoming webinars that we have over the next next few weeks as we get into the end of the year as well. Um, so we do want to thank you all. We especially want to thank Vinci. Thank you for joining us, you guys. Um, let me do one last real quick poll question here. For those of you that are still on the line or still listening to this webinar, let me go ahead and ask if you are interested in this uh, follow-up webinar. That way they can follow up with you and make sure that you're able to attend um, one of those follow-up webinars. Yeah, I can, I can, uh, I can, I can tell you, Michelle. Um, f going back to my notes and the stuff that I covered, consolidation is it's a pretty involved topic, uh, you know. So, so I don't think one webinar of a twenty, thirty minute presentation is enough. I mean, we have to explore intercompany transactions, intercompany loans. Um, this interesting concept that you can have multiple QB files, and inside a QuickBooks file, you can have multiple classes that are in turn treated as separate entities. Um, so this this is this is very interesting and it requires a lot of design uh, to get it right. But this is not your average client. I mean, your average client that has 10, 20, 30 locations. These are pretty sizable fees that we can charge for this. And, and, and one tool that can do it all. That this is pretty powerful stuff. So so yeah, we're definitely gonna need to go more in depth in a, in a, in a webinar that that goes more in depth in consolidation. I believe. Yeah, and, and you're right. It is definitely an in-depth topic, and dealing with the inner companies is always a challenge. I remember way back when, when I worked at Hallmark Cards, and I was involved with the consolidated financial reports and trying to deal with those inner company accounts and get everything reconciled and so that everything would, would balance out in the consolidation. It is very complex. It always has been. <laughs> and it's always been a challenge um, to do that kind of stuff. So definitely a great topic. Um, one last question for you, Charles. Does it work in Canada for Canadian QBO and stuff? Yes. Uh, QuickBooks uh, Canadian. Uh, and not just that, Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysia. Uh, Fabulous. We, we, we do have uh, we do have clients uh, from the Philippines that uh, have I can't remember how many files twenty thirty files or something like that. So one 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 to a thousand. If we we have one requirement, the files need to be on this planet. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, very good. Well, that definitely leaves it wide open there. And you know, one of the things that I found was interesting is Cavinci actually has a patented process on how they do this. Um, and I think that's one thing that makes it so amazing and so different from any of the other tools that you find out there. Um, so lots of you were interested in following up um, and getting some more information. So we will be sharing in an email after this webinar. You'll get an email with a link to the PowerPoints that you, ha you have, links to those webinars. We'll share the information with Charles and his team so they will be following up. But I definitely think it's worthwhile um, to investigate and look into it. So. 
Sarah just summarized it great for us. She says, it takes me hours and hours to consolidate my largest client. Glad I popped in today. Yes, that's, that's what it's all about. We want to share tools with you all that's going to help you in your practices and help you to add value for your clients so thank you guys for joining us Charles thank you very much for being here and your team for helping to answer some questions Hector any last comments no that's it if you're coming to Vegas please say hi if you're not coming to Vegas attend next week it should be an interesting webinar we never done a mix live <laughs> with the people on stage I mean people on, uh, on, on in a classroom and on stage and webinar before so it's gonna be interesting at least it will be it will be all right, so thank you all very much. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks, Charles.